Should I just show you or explain it first? So, yeah, however you'd like, really. If you could just demonstrate what your device does and explain a little bit how it works. Yeah, absolutely. So, first, as some context, so the uh -huh. whole idea of this project was to take inspiration from like a conductor baton. So, we wanted to, based on the movements, like doing a 4 4 measure, um, that's how we're going to control the audio output in the beats per minute. And so this can help train your rhythm, as Larry suggested, um, but just to kind of show how it works. So right now we're in the pause state, uh -huh. um, but if I pick this up and begin to do a 4-4 measure, I think it's a little quiet if you want to. But depending on um, the speed of which you're doing a 4-4 measure movement, which I'm no professional at, uh -huh. um, it should control the BPM and change the output. Unfortunately, I am not very consistent <laughs> with my um, measurements. But if we did have like a metronome and be able to follow along, you'll see the BPM also reflected. Oh, I see. So BPM okay. is down here in the corner. Yes. And am Oops. I correct that it's adjusting the speed of playback based on the speed with which you're doing the 4-4? Four four? Okay. Yes. Can you try going really fast? Here. How about you take the demo <laughs> as well? So if I go really fat, that kind of distorts it because it's sort of like a more like nightcore feel. And the BPM's and go, increasing. Never go very slow. It like slows it down dramatically. Cool. And if we also just leave it still for a couple seconds, it'll pause. <laughs> In principle. <laughs> Do our demo. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Do you want to start over? No, no, no. I, I think it's okay. Okay. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. It's trying to pause there, clearly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I tried pausing again. There it goes. There go. Awesome. And so, yeah, now we have our little audio visualizer there as well. So. so um, okay, so this is wireless. Yes. So can you, how is this communicating with, oh, okay, there's a whole other piece over here. <laughs> yeah. So can you, can you explain how the communication works between these two devices and sort of what each is responsible for? Yeah, so essentially we like having the idea of two Picos having their own independent responsibilities. So the idea of this one we call our peripheral one is it's completely wireless. Um, and then we use lightweight IP between the two Pico uh, Ws. So the one, this one we call our central, that's going to be our, our access point. Um, uh -huh. And so this one is the station that connects to it. Um, and so... <laughs> we're going to listen to that wrong repeat. Um, but yes, yeah, so the connection's through the lightweight IP. This guy here, our peripheral, he has the IMU on it. Um, and then based on the gyroscope, we have a threshold set to try and make those different states of that okay. four, four conductor. And so it will calculate the BPM as well as tell whether or not we're in the paused or unpaused state based on where we're moving. And then we'll, that will be, data will be combined in an array, which will send over to the central. Okay. And the central will parse that data. Um, and do all of our other functions. Do you want to describe yeah. what the central does? So the central is mainly like interfacing with the DMA, um, different DMA channels that go, that go to either the VGA screen or to a DAC, which then actually outputs. Okay. And depending on like the BPM, which is like a value that it receives from the other Pico W, it'll like adjust the DPM um, transfer rate and either speed up or slow down the song. Um, and then also a lot of the memory on this is taken up by like the wave file itself. Um, so that's all stored in flash memory. And um, because the Pico only has like two megabytes, we're only able to store like around like 15 seconds. Sure. Um, so it loops, is yeah, that right? It okay. Loops okay. okay. So let me just make sure I, I understand the pieces here. So your baton includes a Pico W and an IMU powered by a couple of batteries here. Yep. And am I correct that you're using the gyroscope in the IMU to determine the rate at which the conductor is moving the baton? Yes. Okay. And then that, am I correct that, so this is an access point to which this connects? Yes. 
and this communicates information about the motion over to this one, which then controls the rate of playback? Yep. Okay. Wow. Yeah, we want to give it a good separation. So. Yeah. And the, is it a, what am I trying to ask here? Are you, does the device allow for a continuous range of beats per minute or is it selecting between sort of like this number, this number, this number? Is there a discrete set of BPMs that are allowed or is it any continuous range? It's any range. Although, any range. Um, if we go like too high, like, like 3000, it sort of like breaks things. Sure, like sure. Humanly, that's not really possible. Sure. Yeah, so continuous range of integers, yeah. and then we may have a cutoff, so it doesn't get too crazy. And then you mentioned that you're storing the audio itself in flash memory, mm -hmm. and then you have a DMA channel configured to shuffle data from flash memory out to the SPI DAC. Yeah. Yes. And um, are you controlling the speed of playback by adjusting the rate of that DMA channel? Yes. Yeah. that Okay. I think one part that I learned a lot about is just like the different number of DMA channels that we're using. Because sure. Because we have it for the, um, the audio output as well as the lightweight IP and the VGA, which I kind of asked about before. So um, making right. sure that they aren't all configured on the same one was something that I had to, had to consider later on. Right. Yeah, those are hard to track down bugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Cool. Thank you both. That's a really cool demo. I like the visualization too. It's nice.